Tires seem like simple devices that carry cars and trucks over the highway. But today's tires are highly complex. They're composed of 20 or more parts of rubber and steel bonded together. You probably heard the saying, tires just do that. At the end of this video, we hope you'll understand how tires perform. And maybe you too will be saying, yes, they do that, but here's why. Wear is the result of friction created between the surface of the road and the tread of the tire as it rolls along the highway. This friction is influenced by several factors. The physical characteristics of rubber, the resulting combination of load and inflation on the tire, and the influence of alignment and other mechanical systems on the vehicle. The wear pattern you see is a result of the shape of the tire's footprint in contact with the road. A tire with perfect wear would have a well-formed footprint. Additionally, the weight would be evenly distributed over the footprint, maximizing the tire's life. Keep in mind the tire's footprint is influenced by tremendous forces as it rotates. Load and inflation, suspension, and road surfaces change the tire's shape constantly. The wear created by the physical properties of rubber is more complex. There are several factors to be considered here. As a tire rotates and comes in contact with the road, the tire, a round object, must change its shape to match the surface of the road, a flat object. Let's examine the components of this process. Compression. As a load is applied to a tire, the tread rubber in contact with the road is compressed. Rubber, by its nature, when compressed or under load, changes shape, but does not change in overall volume. This property of rubber is unlike some other solid materials. For example, if you compress a loaf of bread, its volume or size decreases. Keeping in mind when under load, rubber will not decrease in size or volume. The existing volume of rubber will only assume a different shape. As a block of rubber assumes its new shape, separate areas of the rubber react differently. The center of the rubber block is well braced and stable, so movement is minimal, whereas the outside edges are able to move or squirm more freely. As you remember, squirm, or movement, creates friction with the road and results in wear. Since the center and the edges of the rubber block move at different rates or speeds, the faster moving edges have more wear. This difference in wear rates can be seen in both rib and traction tires. The tread can be altered to compensate for some of these properties. One approach is to change the shape of a traction block. Another is to support individual blocks by the surrounding blocks. Rib designs are enhanced by creating grooves and or sipes at the edges of the rib. These modifications allow the rubber movement to take place at other than the point of contact with the road. This reduction of movement improves the wear at the edge of a tread block, resulting in a more uniform appearance. The next source of wear is a result of rolling forces. As the tire rotates and comes in contact with the road surface, the tread must change its shape from round to flat. The rotational force creates additional distortions in the tread. During rotation, the radius of the loaded portion of the tire is smaller than that of the unloaded portion of the tire. This results in the tread increasing in speed during the start of the contact patch and reducing in speed at the end. These changes in speed cause slippage. Slip results as the tread exits the contact patch. When the tire rotates through its contact patch, it becomes highly distorted. As the load on the tire is reduced and the speed of the tread lessens, the tread rubber returns to its original shape and size. While this is occurring, the face of the tread is still in contact with the road surface. The tread surface is allowed to slide on the road and creates wear. The next consideration is mechanical influences. The rubber will also distort and wear as a result of mechanical inputs from the vehicle. The source causing this wear may be worn parts, varying loads, or alignment problems. Another factor is footprint, or contact patch sizing. The load and inflation pressure of the tire will significantly affect the size of the contact patch. The correct size for a contact patch is determined by the manufacturer and is controlled by matching correct air pressure to the load on the tire.
always check with the tire manufacturer for the correct pressure recommendation. Keep in mind that the pressure information molded on the sidewall of the tire as required by government regulation is not necessarily the correct pressure for your usage. Tires used in various applications will wear differently. At one extreme would be a steering tire used on a city refuse vehicle with constant turning, stopping and starting, yielding less than 10,000 miles of life. Compare this with a long haul carrier. Steering tread life in these operations in excess of 100,000 miles is common. Keep in mind, with higher mileage and slower wear rates, the opportunity for irregular wear to develop is increased. Tire wear due to rubber distortion can be a result of various mechanical influences. One of these influences is vehicle alignment. There are several different alignment factors which will affect tire performance and vehicle handling. These are caster, camber, toe, ackerman, kingpin inclination or KPI, and thrust. Although all have some influence on tire performance, caster is primarily a handling factor, and camber, KPI, and Ackerman can only be corrected by major component replacement. Thus, this video will concentrate on toe and thrust, which are the two major influences on steer tire wear, and can be easily corrected on most vehicles during normal maintenance services. Toe is the measurement of the distance between the front of the steering tires and the distance between the rear of the steering tires. Toe in occurs when the front distance is less than the rear distance. Toe out occurs when the front distance is greater than the rear distance. Most tire and vehicle manufacturers recommend a setting of plus 1 seconds of an inch to plus 1 sixteenths of an inch toe in to achieve optimum tire wear and vehicle handling. Since the front tires are pushed outward during vehicle movement, a slight toe-in is desirable to keep the front tires in a straight-ahead position. If the toe is properly set, the steer tires will feel smooth and even when you move your hand across the tread surface. If the front tires have excessive toe-in, a feathering wear will be created. The tread will feel smooth when you move your hand in across the tire, but you will feel a drag or resistance when you move your hand back out across the tread. If the front tires have excessive toe out, the opposite will be evidenced. The resistance will be felt going across the tread with no resistance felt while being withdrawn. This wear on the tread occurs due to the shearing action created by side forces resulting from excessive toe in or toe out. An analogy would be using a file on a block of wood. The wood will be smooth in the direction of filing and rough in the opposite direction. A simple rule of thumb to remember when analyzing steering tire wear is smooth in means toe in, smooth out means toe out. If one front tire indicates toe in and the other indicates toe out, the problem is with the drive axle alignment. On a tractor with tandem drive axles, the two axles should be parallel to one another. Any deviation from this parallel position will create a scrub angle. This angle should be no larger than one-tenth of a degree. An easy method of checking this angle is to measure the distance between the ends of the axle hubs on each side of the tractor. The difference between these two measurements should be no larger than one-eighth of an inch. The easiest way of accomplishing this measurement is by using a trammel bar. The pointers on the trammel bar must fit in the axles centering holes on both sides of the vehicle. For example, if the ends of the drive axles on the right side of the vehicle are one half inch closer together than the axle ends on the left side, this will cause the vehicle to pull or drift to the right. Think of this example as similar to rolling a cone along the ground it will roll in the direction of the smaller end. In this example, the vehicle will drift to the right. The driver must counter steer to the left to maintain the vehicle's direction of travel. The result of this steering action is that the right front tire will exhibit toe-in wear and the left front tire will exhibit toe-out wear. If the opposite wear patterns exist on the steer tires, then the drive axles are closer together on the left side. 
Flat spotting on steer tires is generally caused by an imbalance situation. Some factors contributing to this condition are the tire and wheel assembly being out of balance, the brake drum is out of round or missing balance weights, mismounting, a wheel out of round, bad or missing shocks, light axle loads with high inflation pressures, or improperly centered assemblies in hub piloted axles. If a steer tire assembly is out of balance, the driver will usually feel it either in the steering wheel or through the floorboards. For example, an imbalance of 10 ounces on an LP22.5 tire at 67 miles per hour would equal 66 pounds of force at the 